Namaste Jayin, welcome to MMK The Eagle View. Apologies, uh, we were uh, not in touch for uh, almost 5, 4, 5 days. So today we are going to see a very, very important research report on bio-warfare, especially nanotechnology and virology. Uh, this was authored by Rand Clark, uh, G. Yards, Jio Sin Lin and Robert McWright. This was published in February 2024. Most of this research uh, material uh, was based on open source intelligence. The report was titled as Recent Advances in Dual Use Virology and Nanotechnology Research in China. By now, something should have ringed your uh, mind. So, what we need to see here is China continues to accelerate its dual use virus research. It's clearly meant to be uh, a tool in warfare, which is bio-warfare. Use of virus and use of uh, biological weapons against an enemy state is typically called as bio-warfare, which is banned. Use of chemical biological warfare is banned. But China continues to grow so, do so, and they have been advancing their research both in virology and also in uh, nanotechnology. So, uh, here, Based on the open source research and various articles, uh, I'll share this detailed report with you uh, in our description through a Google link. And uh, what it says is, China over a period of time, so even 15 years before, all this uh, cutting edge technology like nanotechnology, biotechnology, uh, researchers of advanced nature, they were dependent on the Western countries. But now the report indicates China is self-sufficient. They are capable enough to take this research on their own and to uh, do this research on their own. They are self reliant in this. They are no more dependent on Western countries. Most of this technology has been stolen from US, UK, South Korea, Japan and other European countries. Now, on 4th January 2024, the most high risk SARS, SARS, SARS-CoV-2 experiment uh, has been progressed. Here, this time they have taken a pangolin virus uh, and they have researched it. Who researched it? It was researched by Beijing Advanced Innovation Center for Soft Matter, Science and Engineering, which is part of Beijing University of Chemical Technology, BUCT. So, they have uh, taken a pangolin coronavirus isolate GXP2VC7. So, we already know there is an existing coronavirus which became a pandemic, which took millions and millions of life across the world, which literally put the world to its knees over a period of time. We, nobody knows, no researcher, economic researcher, even today knows how much of damage it has caused to the mankind, to the animal and to the planet Earth. But they have gone to the next level. Now they here the BUCT, Beijing University of Chemical Technology, have gone into a new pangolin coronavirus isolate. It is named as GXP2VC7. This causes 100% mortality in a humanized mice model. We all know most of these experiments are considered, you know, are conducted uh, over mice, the white mice. Here, it's a humanized mice model, which means genetically modified mice, which resembles, with the genetically it resembles to humans. And uh, when this result was published initially, this word lethal was there, 100% mortality, lethal. We, we typically use a word called lethal in military terms. It's a lethal weapon, it's a potent weapon. It's 100% lethal, right? So here these guys have used it uh, in a research report. That's why it's a dual use virology research. But when this report was tabled uh, in the Journal of Virology by American Society of Microbiology, these words were uh, edited, this was doctored. And then some other words were included. They have basically said that no, we are actually doing this research. Now, who the hell will do all this research? You know, already there is a virus which has become a pandemic and now we call it as an endemic. Still, we get infected with coronavirus, but it's no more a pandemic. Humans have developed their immunity. But if you go into the next version of it, why, do, why the hell you do all this? The reason given by China is we want to be future proof. We are researching various mutants of this virus, possible mutants of this virus. And we are finding vaccines in advance. So this is the same thing which was given by Gates Foundation, by hell number of these pharma companies. Whenever you ask them, they'll say we are future-proofing our humankind from this sort of virus attacks in the future. And uh, here, uh, when they say uh, they, the data about pathogenicity of this new pathogen. So pathogenicity tells how much percentage of lethality is there, how much percent of mortality is there 
what kind of effect it has on the mice that has been removed and omitted and uh, it says it cannot be revealed now the master of this entire story is none other than the america because uh, this high risk research was actually done by america way back in 1970s and uh, as far as this sars virus is concerned the group of virus which causes pneumonia so many other thing including covid this was actually done by us way back in 202002 uh, where they filed a patent the patent number of this is us 72793272 bravo 2 this was done way back in 2002 22 years before but from there this virus this research has been advanced by china and china is doing its own uh, research now now china is also doing something on nanotechnology this is done by hefi institute of physical sciences part of chinese academy of uh, sciences cas now they have developed a smart dna molecular nano robo model now this is a very greek term to all of us who are not uh, in technical uh, thing i happen to speak to one of my friend uh, who is involved in virology uh, he told me that the nano robots today are being experimented in a simple layman tell the word the words i just read phrase it for you if we have a headache we take a paracetamol or a dolo 650 basically we take a painkiller but that doesn't only go to your brain or head it goes to you know whole of your body through your blood stream uh it doesn't only go to the intended place of pain whereas a nano robo with a very nano nano uh, gram load of this particular medicine or it may be a painkiller or a steroid can actually travel and deliver the it in the right target so what happens is what he said is this research is very positive in terms of cancer cure and all why because when you do a chemotherapy for a cancer it completely destroys the cells and it has a lot of side effects it doesn't only kill the cancerous cell it also say, you know kills the good cells but how dare if you use a molecular nano robo model a nano robo which will go and kill only those particular intended bad cells or an inflammated cell uh, so this is called a biological target which can be a drug or anything can be delivered precisely to that instead of giving a generic medicine which will have side effects on your other organs as well so but uh, they say that the study also says that this technology has a potential application in biosensing bioimaging and drug delivery so we can pinpoint understand where exactly it is going on so you can put a nano camera send the robo inside it will you know pass through your blood vessels it can possibly detect everything but there are severe risk associated with this uh, advancement what it is is the ability of nano robots uh, to transport biological agent directly to target cells with such pressure could have a dual use application it can be used in military as well because the links between the one which is carrying out this research fa institute of physical sciences is actually funded by the chinese people liberation of army uh, people liberation army so you have the pla sponsored hips which is doing this uh, du- uh, you know uh, nano robot technology Uh, which is supposed to benefit humans which is supposed to help mankind you know in handling complex situations like undergoing unwanted surgeries but it can also be used as a dual uh, pur- military purpose it can be used as a mass weapon mass weapon on the enemy troops it can be used on diplomats it's unimaginable so they say they have called out they flag the risk risk involved in you know actually getting this uh, technology or rather before we celebrate this technology we need to understand it has been it has a dual use and chinese pla is sponsoring this hips institute which is carrying out this research answers everything you know we intend to uh, doubt so here it also says china is also doing lot of ambitious program to become the world leader leader of the dual use technology domain not only in virology and uh, nanotechnology uh, it has uh, critical de- beijing earlier used to have critical dependency of these technologies from the western countries china is almost now 99% uh, self sufficient most of this technologies has been either stolen it may be ip intellectual property theft from western countries japan taiwan south korea and even russia so with this uh, they have uh, the first mover advantage in the strategic technological domain area and we know how uh, first mover gets an advantage look at what we see in the nickel uh, lithium uh, ion batteries now sodium ion batteries china has become a leader 
uh, they have overtaken Tesla, BYD, uh, the Chinese company has overtaken Tesla in terms of being the world number one uh, electrical vehicle company. So these are all good to have a competition in a technology world which eventually gives, becomes big businesses. But this dual use research is a cause of concern because we all know NBC nuclear biochemical warfare is a biggest threat to the mankind, it is also a biggest threat to the entire world. Many of these researches have been banned, but China continues to uh, do so. Now, uh, let's see the three important institutions which is carrying out this controversial deadly researches in China. One is Beijing Advanced Innovation Center for Soft Matter, BAICSM, uh, part of Beijing University of uh, Chemical Technology, B uh, BUCT. A research center for clinical medicine. Now here is a key word why we doubt their military is research center for clinical medicine which is doing its controversial research is inside the fifth medical center of PLA's P general hospital. It's placed, it's, it's strategically located inside a massive military hospital of PLA. The third institution is uh, Nanjing University State K, uh, State K uh, Laboratory of uh, pharmaceutical biotechnology so these are the three which are you know actually carrying out this very controversial uh, experiments out of this the already said that the pangolin coronavirus isolate which is named as gx underscore p2vc7 it caused 100 percent mortality in hac2 transgenic mice models Transgenic mice model, again it's a new word for me, when I spoke to people they said these are the genetically modified uh, mice which almost closely resembles to humans. Okay. Now uh, this uh, Wuhan Institute of Virology which is a very famous one uh, which was behind the earlier corona outbreak. They said there were two SARS-CoV related pangolin coronavirus which was made in 2017 and 2019. GX2017. GD oblique 2019. These are the isolates prior to COVID-19 outbreak. So the viruses were ready in their lab in 2017 and in 2019. And uh, the cell culture isolate which was named as PCOV-GD01. This is what eventually become the SARS-CoV-2 COV-2 which causes which caused a huge distress it killed close to i think 8 million people around the world a lot of people lost their livelihood we have seen the terrible times in our lives possibly our future generations will never see it again rather the human generation could never see it again but uh, this was all done in Wuhan Institute of Virology way back in 2017 and 19. now after all this China itself, the Chinese people themselves uh, were one of the biggest casualty of this virus. They had lost, uh, the China's opaque system doesn't let us know how many Chinese got killed. But for sure, the trigger of fall of China, China's economy uh, actually started with the second lockdown post this uh, COVID outbreak in China in 2022. And uh, now here, GX2 underscore P2V can infect humanized mice with high viral loads detected in both lung and brain tissues. Now here is where it, you know, it, we all know the one which affected us mostly it was lung, the respiratory tract. Later people had some other discomforts, lot of people had heart attacks. But here it is going to affect not only lungs, it is also going to atta attack the brain tissues. Okay. Now uh, the research which further also says, if you look at this uh, screenshot, the research which was carried out and uh, in, in the screenshot you can see they have edited these words, they have removed the word lethality, they removed the word 100% mortality, mortality and also they say it has an outbreak risk as well which means which whatever the best of the systems you have, protective systems you have in your bio, biological laboratory, still this virus can come out of your lab. It's not 100% foolproof. Okay, now let's look at the strategical implications of this now once us had this we know the biological warfare was done in on many countries especially on african nations all these big countries have used the african people at guinea pigs indians were used as guinea pigs a lot of these things were going and as we progress the world became more transparent more accountable 
So these are all put on, at least it was happening behind the scenes, not officially as a state policy. Now here we have to see what all, uh, uh, you know, strategical implication it has. China previously required intensive and targeted international connectivity to apply in this technology. Now they are self-sufficient, which means no country can sanction them and stop them from doing this. And uh, the most of the world's think tank were actually focusing on the PLA's uh, military capability, military modernization, missiles, nuclear weapons, their naval progress, their rocket regiments, the conventional military power followed by their nuclear power. But people forgot that China is doing something like this and that is much more serious and much more potent to the entire community of the world. And third thing is, uh, the, the PLA is handling this. Most of these three institutes which have been doing this research is directly or indirectly connected with the PLA. So it is obviously it is going to be a dual use technology. Like look at India, who would have ideally carried out this research? If at all it is intended to do something good to humans, the research uh, in terms of uh, vaccines, the research in terms of health programs, it is typically done by ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research. Similarly, every organization, uh, every country has its own organization to do this. China is the only country which uses its military uh, to do this. Obviously, this is going to be a, a dual use technology. Now, uh, the next version of SARS-CoV-2 where they have this, say, taken this, uh, you know, pandolin virus isolate it is much more deadly. So they can use nano medicine as a weapon. Now, nano medicine is too tiny to be found out by naked eye. It, I don't know how uh, good, uh, for how it's possible to even find out, put it through a microscope. So potential use of nano medicine as a weapon, Na nano robotics and as autonomous weapons, nano robotics uh, and autonomous weapons because this robot uh, robots. Uh, very minutely, uh, nano, it's mean nano, we can, really can't see it with the natural eye. So those can be used as uh, autonomous weapons. Nano bioinformatics for bio warfare, nano scale chemical sensors, nano cyber biological weapons, advanced chemical warfare, covert surveillance and assassinations. This is like potentially it can take off high value targets and other countries, prime minister and other countries, finance minister, their diplomats. They will never even come to know what has happened because the end result will be they have been infected by certain virus which will be impossible for any intelligence or investigation agency to get it into. And also they can use it for non-conventional attacks. They can use it for cyber biological attacks. They can use it for targeted biological warfare because they have stolen the genetical data of almost most of the people of the world. They know how the Indian genetics is. They can customize a virus if they have to attack target only India or they can customize to that level. They can choose one part of India and then make a virus, customize a virus for it. They can uh, target African nations, they can target Americans, they can target literally their own population as well. And this has a irreversible, it, it also causes a irreversible damage. Now, to uh, handle if China would launch this, it's difficult to prove. We still haven't been able to prove WHO was playing their card. It, the, most of the, even the Americans were singing their lab, you know, song. People who raise their voices, experts who raise their voices, voices in uh, places like Twitter, Facebook, they were banned, their accounts were removed. So China literally showed to the world with every uh, single uh, human in the world would believe, even the Chinese would believe. The China did this nasty uh, game of uh, coronavirus, but there is no proof. If something happens like this, what does an other country have as an option to counter react? If a country uh, has a, you know, if, if we have a nuclear threshold, if a country uses uh, nuclear weapons on us, we are going to do a massive retaliation. We, we have a no first use policy. We know how to handle Pakistan. The levels of escalation, what weapons to use at what level, when will we use missiles, when will our fighter aircrafts enter, when will we have a physical combat, we have a protocol. But something of this sort, what would be the protocol, exact protocol, we really don't know. Now, uh, if you need to know uh, what is the second uh, intensity, the intensity of the new uh, uh, you know, virus they are uh, doing, uh, SMA1901, one of a variant, 
exhibited significant body weight loss starting at two days post infection. The most of the aged mice demonstrated a 25 percent reduction in body weight. This is no jokes. You lose 25 percent of your body weight in matter of two days. Within three days of post infection, the mice showed mortality. By seven days post infection, only about 15 percent of the aged mice survives. Aged mice replace it with the world called aged humans. Only 2 out of 15 humans can survive this, which clearly means the mortality rate of this particular variant which they are trialing right now is 85%. 25%. Can you imagine a 70 year old, uh, 70 kg weighing male or a female losing almost 20 25 kgs in just a matter of 2 days of infection? And it is not only affecting uh, the lungs are the upper respiratory, it, it is affecting the kidney, it is affecting the lean, spleen, uh, spleen, intestine, brain, heart. It possibly attacks everything. Now, this is deadly. Now, coming to the conclusion of this, I will share this report with you. You can read it. Those who are experts in virology, uh, doctors, we are happy to welcome you. Uh, come on board in our channel to speak more about this. Whatever we found uh, on a routine research in terms of our open source intelligence, we found out this, we presented this to you. This is deadly. Something has to be done to China. Uh, countries have to put a united front and China has to be made accountable economically. Uh, China has to face it. Otherwise, this nasty research, if this continues, is going to be a biggest threat to the humankind. Thank you all. Jai